Hey everyone, my name is Will Valida, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how scaling works in Azure Container Apps. Now, in Azure Container Apps, it manages automatic horizontal scaling through a set of declarative scaling rules. As our container app scales out, new instances of the container app are created. These instances are known as replicas. And when we define scaling rules for our container app, new revisions of our container app will be created. So when we change our scaling rules for a container app, this is known as a revision scope change. Note that there are two scale properties that apply to all scaling rules in your container app. The minimum number of replicas running for your container app and the maximum number of replicas running for your container app. Now with Azure Container Apps, we can scale our app to zero, which helps us, pre well, which prevents from our app from being charged for usage. However, the flip side to this is if we want to ensure that an instance of our application is always running, what we need to do is we need to set the minimum, minimum replica count to one or higher to make sure that we don't get any cold starts for our application. If, however, there are replicas that remain in memory but aren't processing any events, then essentially you'll be billed for an idle charge. So bear that in mind when you're setting the number of replicas for your container app. Another thing to note about scale limits in container apps is that the replica quantities that we define are essentially a target amount, not a guarantee. So when you're developing your application, make sure you thoroughly test it to ensure that your application is going to scale as you expect it to. Now, Azure Container Apps supports the following scale triggers. So we can scale on HTTP and TCP traffic, which will scale our container app based on the number of concurrent HTTP or TCP requests to our container app revision. We can also scale on event-driven triggers. This capability is supported by CADA, and any event that's supported by CADA is supported in Azure Container Apps. Depending on the type of event that we want to scale on, we'll need to configure it depending on how we would configure it in CADA. So the support for a wide variety of different scalers uh, that we would find in CADA, and all of them require a little bit of different configuration. So make sure that you, when you're configuring your event-driven trigger, you're configuring it uh, in the proper way that CADA would expect you to. And finally, we can also scale on CPU or memory usage in our container app. Now, one thing to note here is that with HTTP, TCP, and event-driven scaling, we have the ability to scale our container apps to zero instances. However, when we're scaling on CPU or memory usage, scaling to zero is not allowed, just like it's not allowed in CADA. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of CADA or don't know what it means, it stands for Kubernetes-based event-driven auto-scaling. And CADA is a single purpose and lightweight component that can be added into any Kubernetes cluster. It works alongside the horizontal pod autoscaler and extends its functionality. Now with CADA, we can scale our container apps based on the number of events needing to be processed by our container apps. And there's a wide uh, support for a wide variety of scalers, ranging from Azure services like Azure Service Bus, Event Hubs, Blob Storage, and Q Storage, as well as other cloud provider services and open source software. And I've included a link to the CADA open source website for you to check out more information about that. So let's see how this works in a demo. In this demo, we'll create two container apps, one that scales on HTTP traffic and another that scales on messages being sent to a storage queue in Azure Storage. Let's dive in. All right, so let's jump into the demo. So what I've got here is I've got a bicep template that's defining two container apps. And one of these container apps will accept HTTP traffic. And when the more requests that we get via HTTP, the, um, the more replicas will scale out to. And I've also got a queue reader container app that's essentially going to listen to messages on a queue. And the more um, messages that come, uh, get sent to that queue, the more uh, instances will be added to our uh, container app. So let's take a look at our HTTP app uh, to begin with. So this is very simple. Um, I've just got a basic hello world um, container image that I'm gonna provision. And my scale rules are essentially defined here in this uh, scale uh, properties block. So 
Here I'm setting the minimum and maximum replica. So my uh, minimum replica is set to one and the most we're gonna um, scale up to is 10 uh, replicas. And here I'm going to define a rule. And within this rule, I'm gonna call it um, HTTP rule. And here I'm saying that it's gonna be an HTTP scale rule by giving this HTTP property. And this concurrent request is set to 100. And essentially what this uh, is saying is that when the number of requests exceeds this value, so when we exceed 100 requests, another replica is going to be added. And replicas will continue to be added up until uh, this maximum replica count of 10 here um, as our concurrent uh, requests uh, increase. So I've deployed this to Azure. So if I go into the Azure portal, I'll just scroll in a little bit here and go into this HTTP scaler. If I go down into uh, scale under revisions here, I should be able to see my scale rule defined in the portal here. So I click on that. And as we can see, as we've defined in our bicep template, I've got my rule name. It's gonna be HDB scaling. That's the type of scale rule that we've defined. And we've scaled it for 100 concurrent requests. Cool, so what I need to do is essentially flood this container app with requests. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this um, application URL. This will accept external traffic. Go back into this resource group and I've got an Azure load test. And I'm just gonna use this as a way to do a quick load test against that URL. So click on quick test. Just gonna, once that's loaded, copy and paste, well, sorry, paste that URL into here's my test URL. I'm gonna give this 100 virtual users. I'm gonna run this for 60 seconds and the ramp up time is gonna be 15 seconds. Cool. And before I run this test, click into this tab here. Here's my HTTP scaler app. So if I click on uh, metrics, here we can see how many replicas um, this container app will uh, scale up to. So if I click on replica count here, I should be able to see, I ran this a little bit earlier. Uh, so here it's scaled right up to 10 and I expect the, a similar kind of output here. So here it's scaled back down to one. So when I hit this uh, test URL, um, we should see our, the number of replicas scale back up to the maximum threshold of 10. So I'm gonna run that quickly and through the power of video editing, I'll see you all in a little bit and see how our scaling has, um, has happened. Cool, so now that my test is finished, if I go back into my container app metrics, I can see, I'll just zoom in a little bit here, that when we started our test, it ramped it up to 10 instances, or scaled out to 10 instances. And then once our test was over, it cooled down right back to one, one replica. Now, something just to point out here, if I go back into my scale, and if I edit this scale rule, say if I wanna scale up to, or actually I'll decrease down to five instances, this is going to create a new revision for my app. Now, this container app is supporting multiple revision mode. So that means we can have multiple revisions active at the same time. So if I go into my revision management, that should have created a new revision and I'm sending 100% traffic to it. If you decide to split traffic between your two revisions, essentially what will happen is, this is our original revision and it has a scaling rule that scales up to 10 instances. However, just click on that and just show that, yep, it's gonna scale up to 10 instances for every 100 requests. However, if I change my revision to the new revision I've just created, that's gonna scale up to five instances, still on 100 requests, but it's only gonna scale up to those five maximum requests. So if you're splitting traffic between revisions and each revision will have its own URL, and if you're sending traffic um, 
or splitting traffic between uh, different revisions, bear in mind that there's going to be different scaling rules for each revision. So just incorporate that into your thinking in your design when you're thinking about splitting traffic between your revisions and how you might scale out for those two different revisions. Cool, so now I'm going to go back into my bicep template. And now we're going to take a look at my storage, um, my Q Reader app. So here I've got a Q Reader. This is a container app that doesn't accept traffic from the outside, but essentially what it does, it's going to listen to um, a queue within Azure Storage. So here I've defined a secret called Q Connection. And this is going to be my connection string to my um, my storage account. And within my container template here, I've got the queue name that it's going to listen to. So I've got a queue um, in my storage account that I'm going to send messages to. And then it's going to connect using this queue connection string referencing the secret of queue connection. So if I go down to my scale settings for this particular container app, here I'm setting the minimum replicas to one and maximum replicas to 10. And instead of an HTTP scale rule, we've got an Azure queue scale rule. And within this rule, we're gonna configure, okay, we're going to listen to our storage queue name by providing the name of that storage queue as queue name. And then for every 10 messages placed in the queue, we're going to create a new replica. So we can set that to 10 messages, 20 messages, 100 messages, whatever. And to authenticate to it, we're going to provide the connection string to the queue as a parameter to the configuration file reference in the secret ref property. So here I've defined my secret called queue connection, and I'm referring to that um, secret by passing in queue connection as my secret reference. Cool, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into uh, Visual Studio. And here I've got a very simple console application that's going to send, let's say, uh, 500 messages. And all this is going to do is just going to flood this storage queue. Uh, I've got a queue name, um, connection string set. And it's just going to flood this um, storage account queue with messages. So before I run this, I'll go back into the portal, go into my storage account. And if I go into my queues, you should see the queue, test queue, that it's gonna send messages to. So just go back into the queue reader container app in the portal. And I'll switch to this tab. Um, and here we're gonna uh, keep track of the replica count again. Um, so here, this is a bit of a test that I ran earlier. I might give that a bit of a refresh. Um, so as we flood the, those messages, uh, flood that queue with, the, uh, with messages, Essentially, it's gonna scale uh, from one replica, which is our minimum replica, all the way up to 10 until it stops processing those messages and it should scale back down to one replica. So I'll switch to this tab for the moment. And if I go into scale, I should see a scale rule defined my queue rule. And there is the uh, rule that I defined in my bicep template. So uh, it's gonna to listen to this queue name of test queue uh, and it's gonna scale up um, or scale up replicas uh, every 10 messages in the queue. And we're actually authenticating to our uh, queue through our queue connection secret reference, which will be the connection string of our storage account. So I'll open up Visual Studio again, and I'm just gonna run this console application. And messages are being sent to the queue. So I'm gonna leave that running uh, in the background and once it's finished processing, we'll see how our container app is scaled based on the number of incoming messages to our queue. Cool, so all the messages have been sent to the queue. And now if I look in my uh, container app metrics, I can see that it's scaled up to about five replicas, processed all the messages, and then scaled back down to one replica. Now, this was just an example of HTTP scaling and event-driven scaling using um, um, Azure storage queues. But if I go into the Kada scalers documentation, Azure Container Apps supports Kada scaled objects and all of the available Kada uh, scalers. So these are all the scalers that you can use uh, within your Azure Container App. 
Now, you usually configure these using uh, YAML. So if I click on Azure Storage Queue, I should see a trigger specification for YAML. So essentially, because I've defined uh, my bicep template in bicep, there's a little bit of conversion needed um, to convert this trigger specification as it would be um, configured in normal CADA into my bicep template here. So let me see if this real estate can work. I'll just do this side by side. So if you look at this um, trigger specification for Azure queue here uh, within this metadata property, so I've defined the queue name, the queue length, and if I look in my bicep template, I can see the same properties being set, right? So anything here within the metadata, uh, so the queue name, the queue length, um, that's essentially the queue it's gonna to listen to and how many messages need to be placed on the queue before my container app is gonna scale up. So when you're using different types of triggers, I really recommend looking at the CADA documentation just to see how the trigger um, specification works in YAML and then convert that back into your bicep template. So here we can see Azure queue is the property name, whereas if I just go back into storage queue, that's gonna be specified as the trigger type. So use Azure queue um, as the property, um, or as the object type, sorry. Um, and then within the metadata, that's what you would include, include inside your Azure queue um, object. Well, that wraps up our demo. Um, let's finish off by recapping what we've talked about in this video. So just to recap, Container Apps manages automatic horizontal scaling through a set of declarative scaling rules. As our Container App scales out, new instances of the Container App are created. With Azure Container Apps, we can scale our app to zero, which will prevent our app from being charged for usage. And we can also scale our Container Apps based on CPU or memory usage, HTTP and TCP traffic, and incoming events that are supported by CADA. Remember that our scaling rules apply to a particular revision. So if we change our scaling rules for a particular container app, new revisions of our container app will be created. So thanks for watching this video. After watching this, you should have a good understanding about how Azure Container Apps scale. If you have any questions about this video, please leave them in the chat below. And if you like this video, give it a like and remember to subscribe for more content in the future. Until next time, happy coding.